been one year since the collapse of Credit Suisse. One year already. Now, on March 15, 2023, the bank's share price plummeted after its largest investor, the Saudi National Bank, said it would not provide any more financial assistance. Well, the Swiss lender ended up, of course, as you know, being rescued in a takeover by rival UBS, brokered by Swiss authorities. Now, the embattled lender had faced governance and trust issues for well over a decade before its collapse. Let's go through this. In February 2020, the then CEO, Tijan Tiam, do you remember we speak to him all the time, resigned amidst a spying scandal? He was then replaced by Thomas Gottstein, who announced a widespread restructuring plan to improve efficiencies. But it was not long before the bank became embroiled in another scandal. The Archegos Fund collapsed, which led to a loss of a mere 4.4 billion Swissy at Credit Suisse, uh, as well as the collapse uh, of Greensill Capital. Now, a year later, the bank's chairman, yeah, so another leader here, Antonio Horta Osorio, he had to resign after being found to have violated COVID quarantine rules. Uh, he was replaced by the former UBS executive, Axel Lehmann. Yeah, he's, he's keeping track with this one. Now, fast forward to 2023, the Credit Suisse Group reported its biggest annual loss since the financial crisis, 7.3 billion Swissy this time. Now, in March of that year, uh, should we move forward here? Let's move forward here. March of that year, turmoil in the US banking sector sent shockwaves through the global financial system. Credit Suisse's largest shareholder, the Saudi National Bank, as we mentioned, said it's not providing any more funds. Do you remember that? We, we had that interview on air, uh, forcing Credit Suisse to take an emergency loan of 50 billion Swissy this time from the Swiss National Bank to shore up liquidity. Now, that same week, the SMB and the Swiss government began negotiations to fast track the bank's rescue by UBS. Now, in the end, UBS agreed to buy Credit Suisse in an all stock deal that was worth 3 billion Swiss francs. Doesn't sound a lot when you consider all those losses and all those credit lines we were just talking about. Former CEO Sergio Motti returned to the bank. Now, let's be brutally honest about it. Ralph Hammers is a perfectly good banker. He was the CEO uh, of UBS. But the gnomes of Zurich probably thought that actually the right man to steer through this momentous time was Sergio Motti. And, and it's been an interesting ride as well for Mr. Motti. I've spoken to him a lot about this, as has Karen. Now, the acquisition was completed on the 12th of June, 2023. Credit Swiss shares closed at 0.81 Swiss francs on their final day of trading. What an extraordinary story. Why don't we revisit now what some of the key shareholders, the stakeholders, had to say when the rescue deal was announced. The latest developments that emanated from the banks in the US hit us at the most unfavourable moment. One time, like last year, we were able to overcome the deep market uncertainty, but not this second time. The accelerating loss of confidence and the escalation over the last few days have made it clear that Credit Suisse can no longer exist in its current form. We are happy to have found a solution, which I'm convinced will bring lasting stability and security for clients, staff, financial markets, and to Switzerland. It is intended that the combined investment banking businesses will over time account for no more than 25% of the group's risk-weighted assets. UBS's strength and our familiarity with Credit Suisse's business puts us in a unique position to execute this integration efficiently and effectively with Swiss and international clients' best interest in mind. I have to state that very clearly. This is no bailout. This is, 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 is a commercial solution because we have a takeover of UBS. It's hard to think it was just a year ago, isn't it? Now, European bank stocks dropped sharply, as you remember, in March last year, amid the crisis at Credit Suisse, as well as the, the wider US banking sector turmoil. But since then, have a look at this chart to my right here. Um, it's extraordinary. Share price have recovered incredibly. UBS is up more than 60% since March 2023. In fact, in fact, hold on there, the board there. Uh, that price there, just under 28 Swiss a year, I remember, I remember specifically that day. I don't trade individual stocks, but I thought, my goodness me, that looks interesting. 14 Swissy was the handle for that stock. So it's pretty much doubled from its low on that day. Now, the wider European banking index is up more than 34%. Still lowly valuations compared with their US peers, but up more than 34%. A number of uh, class action... Uh, 
class actions have been filed against UBS by holders of Credit Suisse's 81 bonds. Now, as part of the deal, again, this was really controversial at the time because there was a bit of equity left, you remember, but the 81, 16 billion Swiss francs of that, uh, those bonds uh, worth of Credit Suisse additional tier one, if we just move on from there, actually, the tier one bonds, they were written down to zero. Now, that's unprecedented, isn't it? Bonds written down to zero, but the equity still had some valuation? Yeah, that was controversial. So in the years since Credit Suisse collapsed, 81 bonds at big European banks have posted a sharp recovery. So you can see some of the contention there. After the acquisition of Credit Suisse, UBS became a wealth management, I love this word, behemoth, overseeing more than $3.4 trillion in wealth management assets. The lender became a major player in the space, ranking behind... Just Morgan Stanley. Right, okay, let's move on. In the second quarter of 2023, its first set of earnings immediately after agreeing to buy Credit Suisse, UBS reported a record-breaking $29 billion net profit. The numbers are huge here. Now, that's the result of the difference in valuation for what it paid for its rival and the value of its balance sheet. In August, CNBC spoke to CEO Sergio Motti, who outlined his plans for the bank. When people that look into the, those numbers, uh, they will clearly understand that those, uh, this uh, negative goodwill is, 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 the, is the equity necessary to sustain 240 billions of uh, risk weighted assets and uh, 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 the financial resources to go through a deep restructuring that is necessary at Credit Suisse because our analysis has proven that uh, the business model uh, was not viable any longer. Credit Suisse has excellent uh, people, uh, clients, uh, product capabilities, but uh, the business model was not uh, sustainable any longer and needs to be restructured. A new report by the OECD, and this is very interesting, and this goes right to the heart of problems from the last financial crisis. Forget about this one. A new report by the OECD suggests UBS's takeover of Credit Suisse created new risks and challenges for the Swiss economy. The organisation warned that the financial group was now bigger than the economic output of the entire country. You knew this, I think, guys, in terms of assets and urged it to meet stricter regulatory requirements. Honestly, the Switzerland's been talking about this for a long, long time. I mean, as I say, right in the last crisis where I hot-footed it to Zurich. Uh, the OECD also raised questions about competition in the Swiss banking sector.